The Planet Crafter was always one of those mysterious steam phenomena for me. 96% overwhelmingly positive reviews, but visually it looked rather simplistic and yes, I am one of those people who do care about how a game looks, so I was always reluctant to try it. Recently it went on a sale and a DLC was added to the game with a new planet. So take my 20 bucks and show me what you got. Oh boy, that went well. The next three days I played this game constantly and was completely addicted to it. The best way to describe it is like Subnautica on steroids and with some really clever progression loops to keep the game fresh along the ride. But let's break it down bit by bit. While maybe featuring a rather simplistic overall look, the game does look a lot better than you might guess from the store page. And it allows the devs to really, really change the looks and feels of the planet during the terraforming process. For example, this is how a planet looks at the beginning. And here's the very same area deep into the terraforming process. But the world doesn't transform just visually, it also changes significantly in terms of gameplay mechanics. Areas open up, new resources become available, high-end loot crates can suddenly be reached and so on. Progression in games is all about giving you these constant little dopamine kicks. So our little monkey brain is happy for a while before craving the next one. And I would honestly declare this game the king of dopamine kicks. You change the world, literally. Not only do you progress through clever systems, but you also see and feel the impact. Lean back with a big fat grin on your face and think, <laughs> I made this. Like a toddler being proud about his first number two job that runs up to his parents and shouts, look, I made this. And usually after a while, you settle into a somewhat repetitive gameplay loop. And here, the planet crafter genius strikes again. In the beginning you place some heaters to raise the planetary temperature level, which eventually will melt a lot of ice and opens up previously sealed access points to high-end resources and loot. In addition you place drills to release pressure from the core and raise the planetary atmospheric pressure level. And the third loop is placing some grass and flower planters to increase oxygen levels plus raising the planetary biomass level. Heat, pressure, oxygen and biomass. Four indicators you can increase by placing according devices and they all accumulate into a global progression counter, the total terraforming score. This basic setup never changes throughout the whole game, uh, but in reality it does, in a very clever way. It starts by focusing on heat, pressure and oxygen. Biomass is really not relevant at the beginning, with heat and pressure being most prominent in the early game. And achieving a higher count is rather simple, but at some point you see that heat and pressure progression ends. They do not unlock new tech anymore. Oxygen becomes more important and you realize that biomass counter, which has barely started yet, has a huge tech tree to unlock. So what you have been doing in the beginning becomes less and less relevant and rewarding. It is phasing out. And the new systems, oxygen and especially biomass, become more and more complicated to increase. Suddenly you need tons of fertilizer which you have to make from various resources in a special lab and then you start fiddling around with mutations and genes because life doesn't simply kickstart itself, it demands a strong slap on the butt from you. So where you once simply planted more and more heaters and drills and worked on some multiplier mechanics, you now need more and more exotic resources, craft fertilizers, bioplastic and bacteria samples. A shift in gameplay occurs and you need to evolve and adapt yourself, the way you play the game slightly and sometimes not so slightly changes. Next up, just when everything starts to become a chore, the game throws new tech to automize stuff at you. Drones, autocrafters and more. You need to learn how that works and maybe change your base layout to accommodate for the new tech so the game forces you to let go of the initial, more simple loops and says, hey, 
Still proud of that number two job you told your parents about? Well, we moved on. You better do too, or you will not progress in the game anymore. While the basic idea on how you move forward is still the same, the gameplay around this progression significantly changes and evolves, never a dull moment in the life of a dedicated terraformer. But it doesn't end here. You will not sit around in your base and wait for the counters to go up while placing a few new devices here and there. Exploration is key and crucial. You have to venture out first a few steps because you have limited oxygen available, but the first new text the game throws at you are bigger oxygen tanks and tools for faster movement speed, to a point where you think, well that jetpack is really overpowered, is it meant to be so easy to go around now? The answer is yes, you need to. The next layer of dopamine kicks, on top of the already existing ones from the overall progression, comes from a very rewarding exploration and finding new loot loop. The loot is not just some nice to have stuff, it is crucial to move forward, provides significant boosts to your technological progression and gives out high-end materials you otherwise have to craft, which would drain your resources and cost a lot of time. The game regularly bottlenecks your progression with new resources you first have to find and which are not obtainable at the beginning. But remember that ice wall in this one cave? Or the dust storm which covered an area? Or that funny looking crater? Once you surpass certain terraforming thresholds, the caves open up, dust storms disappear, new resources emerge from now cracked open rocks, and that funny crater is now a huge hole in the ground, giving access to vast underground areas. Why stop by being a crafting game when you can add a well thought out exploration with a Subnautica style survival layer on top? And because the devs had a good day, they throw in a mysterious background story to explore too. Why are you on the planet? Who are you working for? Has there been others before you and what did they left behind? The original planet has three different endings you can achieve. The new Planet Humble DLC also comes with its own lore and while smaller on the surface, they go all in in terms of verticality. The underground areas which open up later in the game are just as big as the surface level. All of this terraforming progression, huge tech trees to unlock, new mechanics you have to adapt to and integrate, going on expeditions to explore the world and obtain crucial tech and materials, the background story of you and the planet, all of this comes together in an expertly crafted game where the different loops interact with each other and don't feel like disconnected or shallow parts to add some rather meaningless times things looking at you, No Man's Sky. Oh, and the full price for this monster of a game which will eat up your hours like crazy is 24 bucks and 6 for the excellent DLC. That is insane for the amount of joyful hours you can spend. It never was easier to satisfy your little monkey brain and have a good time. 96% overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam is well earned. So if you even remotely like something like Subnautica or Satisfactory, you should really try this game. It is a masterful example of simple looking at the surface, but with a rabbit hole attached, you gladly jump into and emerge back from it after a few days with a big fat toddler grin on your face. Look mom and dad what I did now. Thank you very much for watching this video to the end. I hope it was worth your time. For now this is all. Take good care of yourself and enjoy turning barren deserts into a lush paradise.